Welcome to the Grappling We Re- See exactly. Grappling Rewind Podcast. Welcome to this week on the Grappling Rewind Podcast. This week's show, we are going to recap or we're going to preview Fury Grappling 6, uh, headlined by Rose Nama Younes and Jillian Robertson. We are also going to talk about some of the nominations for Flow Grappling's uh, Match of the Year, Submission of the Year, Breakout of the Year, and a bunch of other categories that they have. As always in the show, I'm your host, Maine. Join the co-host. Miranda. How you doing, Miranda? Not too bad. How are you? Doing pretty good. Doing a lot better now than I was last week, uh, given how sick I was the last week. We are still doing the show remote. Um, it is the day after Christmas, but um, I got hit. I got hit really hard. I've been very, very sick, and so happy to be feeling a little better, but still kind of erring on the side of caution. So if the show takes an audio hit, uh, that is why. Um, we'll probably be back in person next week, but just wanted to play it safe and cautious because um, I was so horrifically sick the last week. And, uh, yeah, that's it. So let's move into the show. I think we have a little bit of news this week, even though Christmas historically in the U.S. uh, is a pretty quiet week for news. Not a whole lot goes on because most people are, you know, with their families and enjoying Christmas here in the U.S. Um, One big piece of news we have is Craig Jones versus Nicholas Margali. It was scheduled for uh, when in February? February 17th, Miranda? February 25th, I think. 25th. Yeah, late February has yeah. been moved. Uh, Craig Jones is cornering or is prepping Volkanovsky to, or for his uh, title his title shot at um, the 55 pound champion, who I'm, I'm blanking on the name. Just beat Charles Oliveira. Um, Islam Makachev. So he's fighting, he's fighting Islam Makachev. And Islam Makachev is a monster grappler. And so Craig Jones has been in Volkanovsky's camp for a couple of camps now. I think since the Brian Ortega fight, since the Ultimate Fighter. And he's, Craig actually did an interview recently talking about he hasn't been a corner in like any fights, pretty much except for UFC title fights. And I think that's such a wild stat. Like he doesn't have a bunch of amateur fights. He has like UFC title fights for Volkanovsky. And a couple of other ones on the Ultimate Fighter, and that is it. Like that is his cornering resume. So he's not in Mer- he's not in the Margali rematch, which is unfortunate. But um, personally, is a huge. They're gonna, alleg- re- they're gonna reschedule it, so it's not. Yeah. It'll it'll come back. It's around. not dead and gone, which I'm I'm happy about. I'm just uh, I'm annoyed because I was really happy. I'm not annoyed. Well, I'm very happy that he is helping out Volkanovski because that dude. Now that Charles Oliveira is, um, you know not no longer the champion. He's like one of my favorite champions. And so having Craig in his corner worked out really well in um really well in the in his previous title fight. So I want to see that dude in his corner and whatever they have to do to prep, you know, it is what it is. Well, There's more money. The other thing the other thing that I found kind of funny is if you listen to uh the podcast with, with um Nikki Rod and J Rod and Krellenston Krell- and everybody when they said the fight was announced, they said, we don't understand why Flo is scheduling it because Craig is not going to be here. He's going to be in Australia. Oh, that's what and I was, that was, was that on Simple Man that podcast? was recorded a while ago. Oh, that's funny. The Simple Man podcast is like, if you don't know, well, I've been listening to it a bunch. You think all of us have been listening to it because yeah. A. There's like two new episodes yeah. that came out recently. Nick Rodriguez, Damian Anderson, came. and um, Ethan Cronston are hilarious. Yeah. And so they, and they also like they're they're pretty loose lipped with a lot of the inner dealings of like how the sport works. And I just find that very funny, partially because of what we do on the show to have a lot of what kind of stuff we know or care about come to light yeah. from the guys and from directly from the sources is pretty entertaining to me. So, yeah, um, that does it. Do we have any. But other? Yeah, they they made a comment about it. So. So Who they knew it was going to get bumped. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So yeah, he's in he's in there prepping Alexander Volkanovsky. It sucks. Uh, I assume that'll probably get moved to like probably the March card, at, at latest the April card. I assume that's a matchup they do want to probably get on the books quicker. They typically, I think, Flo does a pretty good job of like rebooking stuff on the next available card if they can. Is what we've seen in the past for them is they try to go like, okay, it's not gonna happen this card. We'll rebook it for the next card. So hopefully we see it. It's it's definitely a match that makes a lot of sense. But it got it got bumped for uh, UFC and world title fight re- reasons. And Volkanovski going up to 55 should be really exciting. His only other loss is at 170, and that's a whole that's a whole fun story um, for that. So, do we have any other news, Miranda? It's been pretty quiet. Oh, I don't believe so. Uh, all right, cool. So let's move into uh, let's move to talking about flow. 
So Flo put out usually. So every year we do a we do matches of the year, and the Grappling Rewind does like a big end of the year like award show in quotes. There we just kind of run through and recap the best stuff we saw throughout the year, the stuff we enjoyed the most, and really for us it's in no particular order. Flo actually does like awards, and every year they come out with a list that is somewhat similar to our list, but sometimes also pretty substantially different. And I think this year, more than in past years, it's we're, we're working on our list internally. It is pretty significantly different from our list. Our list also includes other events that don't run on Flow, like the stuff that runs on Fight Pass, the stuff that runs on Fight TV, the stuff that we pay for pay-per-view that's not broadcast on Flow. Flow Grappling Awards is just their ecosystem, and so it features stuff like the IBGGF World Championships, their minor and major events, ADCC and ADCC trials, really good collection of events. Yeah, but I would say I would say like two thirds of their list that they came out with is ADCC. Which honestly, I think our list, a big portion of it is ADCC. So we'll talk yeah. about our list here probably either next week or the following week. Um, but Flo's list is out today so we figured we would talk about their list and talk about and run through some of the matches as we kind of go through a little bit of a drought other than fury um you know over the holiday season if there's some stuff you want to go back and watch or stories you want to go back and remember you know this is a good time of the year to do it because the year uh we always say there's a there's a slow period in the year and then january and euros come and that time immediately goes away and we are kind of to the grindstone for at least the first couple of months of the year um, active with matches. So let's start off where they started. Uh, submission of the year. Always a fun one. They have, I think everything is ADCC related for them, which I thought was really funny. Um, and it kind of speaks to the ADCC format. They start off with Pato Z-Lock versus Kennedy at the World Championships of ADCC. Yeah. I, I think it was really unexpected because Kennedy was coming in as the... Was he the returning medalist or he was the... No, he would have been the silver place medalist behind Tankino. Yeah. So he was the highest place returning person. To always have a former medalist or returning medalist get subbed um, is really interesting. And so I think that's partially for submission of the year. It's whenever we do it, and I think, and I when, think when Flo does it as well. Sorry, you were saying? No, I think I think part of the other reason is it's a Z lock. And how often yeah. do you actually have you seen Z locks until in this high level year? Now? at high level comp super rarely like it was a move yeah. you saw mikey do you saw junie do it you saw eddie cummings do it you'd see it occasionally um but it was it was not common until this still i would still say it's not common but yeah. until this year it was something we, we it wasn't something we covered on the show more than maybe once a year so to see oh, it, it at the world championships is pretty wild and this, and the fact that this uh, came out also probably helped Junie's uh, instructional sales. Hey man, good for him. Junie was Junie was in his corner when Pato did it. So, yeah. so, so. with submission of the year, it's always funny because you got you got to balance you ba we balance like three or four things, which is how dope was the submission? Like, was it a really wild sub, like a fast sub or like a unique sub? How unique was the submission? We always have to talk about level of competition because you always have to factor in like, yeah, a, a blue belt versus another blue belt at a Naga or like a local that just is not the level that like yeah, blue belts can do whatever to another blue belt. But another world class level black belt doing it to another world class level black belt, that is typically where we start to get into submission of the year. Like it is one of the best submissions that happened at that level of the year and then also in the stakes. You yeah. want to have like something that happens like an IBJJF Open, versus or like a local versus like an IBJJF Worlds or a major or at ADCC World Championships, the the biggest event we had this year. That's always going to weigh higher, or like a title fight in something that always weighs higher in sort of submission of the year. I think for everyone because of the stakes, like you know that everyone went into that tournament as prepared as they possibly could have been that year, with the stakes being the highest, and so it's sort of just. It gives some flavor so that the fact that all of flows are coming off of ADCC makes a lot of sense because it meets a lot of those criteria up front. Um, so that was, the, that was the first, Matt. That was the first one they had. I think it's a dope submission, really unique submission. Cicero Sulo Bay of Stretch versus Gianni Grippo. This is also on our list. Um, we were live. We were Matt side for We were Matt side for, I think, all of these except some of the South American Trials ones. Yeah. This was wild because... 
Why? I'm trying to think of why, like, to describe Matt's side. We, we can talk, you can actually go back and watch the ADCC West Coast Trials show that we did at West Coast Trials and kind of talking about why this was so wild. But it's not a, again, it's not a, like the Z-Lock. It's not a common sub. It's not something we see no. frequently. And it's Cisneros versus Grippo in the semifinals of the biggest West Coast Trials ever in the second biggest division ever at a, at a Trials. So like, and I have to say that now that I have a jacked up hamstring, watching that is probably the most. It it literally ugh. fucks with my head to watch that. It's such a painful <laughs> sub. And I'm happy that Grippo came I back. I can't watch that. It is wild that Grippo had this injury at West Coast Trials. West Coast Trials was this year, and then got injured. Then went on to win a Nogi World Title on IBJJF in the same year because he just won that a couple of weeks ago. Like that's yeah, but, wild to me. Well, I was gonna say that. IBJJF is normally safer than something like a ADCC, but Absolutely. he did adult, and you, yeah, but you're still doing adult, and you can reap and you can heel hook now, so yeah. it's not as safe as it once was. I just think there's know? money and prestige in the line. In there's more money and prestige in the line at West Coast Trials than there is at Nogi Worlds because ADCC winning a West Coast Trials puts you in the World Championship, puts you in that rare form, whereas just in general at Worlds, because it's open registration for black belts. But I didn't think I didn't think that Gianni Grippo. Well, no, it's not. You have to have so many points. You got to have points, but black belt. but you but you guys can you can get those points. Yeah. Versus trials, and, like winning it, like yeah, you're not going to win. And trials. Gianni couldn't do couldn't do championships because he would, had knee surgery like right around that time. Right. So I think it was so, just a I mean, wild sub to see. You know, it's it's a crazy sub. Um, and it, it came from like a weird spot. Like it wasn't mm-hmm. something that you really expected to happen, you know? No. And I think that's what makes it a little bit more crazy. Like that and both the Z lock from Pato are two that going into it and watching it happen, you didn't expect that sub to be what Yeah, that's something that happen. you didn't have on your bingo card. You have like rear naked yeah. choke or armbar, you don't have yeah, it's gonna Z lock them or suit the If we were making him. side bets, yeah. If we were making yes. side bets on the side, this was not what we made a side bet on. I think it's wild that Cisneros, I think in the four years we've been doing matches of the year, I think he's been on at least three of them. From Purple Belt. I think Cisneros is in our match submissions of the year Almost every single year we have ever done this. So, like, dude, Good. that dude's why I, I gotta look. Somebody has somebody has the list somewhere. I gotta go find the old lists to see what we had. Next one, also West Coast Trials, J Rod's buggy choke versus Hunter Colvin. This is J Rod had a bunch of subs this year that were like f- come from behind victories. I think, if I recall correctly, J Rod was down on points, and. He didn't have enough time left in the match where he would have been able to beat Hunter on points based on how the match was going. He locks up a buggy choke and he submits Hunter Colvin and then wins his spot to the world championships in the West Coast trials there. Um, that again, you can't, you can almost not pick a bigger stage. He had one of the biggest divisions in well, history. Well, didn't he also lose, he lost, uh, who's number one on the show by buggy choke. That's how he didn't get on the show. Oh really? And then he turns I around. About that. Yeah, he. That was before. But was that before or after trials? That's a good question. It would have been. I thought they. We figured out that they filmed the show in March. Yeah. So I so think it, it would have been. East it would have been a month West. after. Oh. Or something like that. Okay. Who's next was I think in March, and I think West Coast trials would have been in April. Well, then it's a, you live by the sword, you die by the sword then. So it wasn't a comeback. <laughs> no, so it West Coast Trials would have been after. It would have been after that. So he didn't get on the show. Oh, okay. And then he did it okay. to Hunter, which is just wild. That's like, what I thought. I thought it was, I thought it was a situation where he yeah. lost by Buggy Choke at the Who's Number One TV show. And then afterwards he came back and won his West Coast Trials yeah. spot by Buggy Choke. And that was such a wild kinda... run in general for Hunt, for, um, for J Rod because it was like, can he do what his brother did, which is lose your East Coast trials in your first year and then go and win the West Coast trials? And he did. And it was like it was kind of it was so much more special kind of watching him win that there because it was kind of the same story that his brother had had two, three years prior, essentially. Um, yeah. And like that just added to he kind of capped it off with, again, such a weird sub 
in such a wildly high profile event after two days of matches to cap it off like that. Pretty wild. Yeah. Next one we had um, Mika Co- Co- Coyote. You said a Coyote. Wait. Oh, no. no. Oh, it's Coyote. Mika, it's Mika Gavel, but it's a it's an arm bar from Ca- Coyote Guard. Yeah. Sorry, I realized I didn't explain that. It's fine. Versus Jackson De Silva. That's the way they, that's the way Flo put it up was Mika Coyote arm bar. So this then- was, I taught, I teach at a university club. And every year at the end of the semester when the club kind of concludes, we have one day that's like Q&A day. After promotions, we meet one more time and then we do Q&A day. And I basically look, whatever you want me to teach you, I'm going to teach you. I'll teach you whatever. And it's always like, I don't throw a lot of heel hooks at the club. Uh, it's always like heel hooks and leg locks and that stuff. And then, but one of the guys was like, what was that thing Michael Galvao did? And then I, on a whim, had to show this move from memory. And I went, oh, God. God, okay. And I, I did it. And it reminded me like the way he jumps over to get this is astonishing. Like to actually have to demo this move and like teach it to a group of people to even do the move is wild. The fact that he was able to do this armbar off this transition at South American trials just speaks to why Michael Gavao is like super next level. Yeah. I don't. I don't have a whole lot to to say about this one, and I'm not no, sure. No, it's you. crazy. But he's had a bunch of submissions. I mean, really, yeah. all year he's had all kinds of crazy shit. So mm-hmm. he's he's definitely somebody that is going to rise up. Probably did continue to make this list. I think. Did they make him a? He did. He's not a breakthrough. What the fuck? Anyway. Is he not? No. Oh, he's on our list for that. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah he is. He's on there. Really? He's on male no, grappler. They have one male grappler. Yeah, they don't have. Him, have, break- have he's on our. He's on our breakthrough list this year. I know. So I'm. Ha- I'm happy that we got. We got that. Um, well, I guess he did come out. Yes, last year. Nah, last year he did, started. but uh, yeah. did he win worlds last year? No, Ty. Ty, he beat Ty. Yeah, Ty beat him. It's, his shit started last year, but yeah. I don't think he he won stuff last year. But I don't think he got black until this the beginning year. of this year, maybe. Yeah, we should know that. Moving, anyway. moving on, guys that are both black belts, uh, Flo Rida, Haas and Rita <laughs> versus Cyborg Abreu. Um, we've talked about this a bunch. For This was, yeah. I think, this might have been the loudest that ADCC, the arena, the Thomas and Max Center got. I I rewatched this because it's like, because of, because of doing the show, number one, and number two, because it's like 26 seconds long, so it's easy to watch. Yeah. Um, and it got loud. Like I didn't, I didn't realize how loud it got. But I think it was because I was one of the people screaming yeah. as it was happening. This was it, like Hassan Marita just goes, "I'm a win," and like fly. Like, is it a flying armbar? No, I mean sort of. He kind of like jumps know. over him and just grabs the arm. Yeah, and it's then more, he it's just more like a jump over than yeah. a flying. But and then he just rips again when i watched this live and then when i watched the rematch i went i don't think i've ever seen someone rip at a grip for an armbar harder than i watched heisem rita rip at cyborg's grip like it was wow. that dude wanted it like 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 you're at adcc well think about cyborg do you think what do you think his grip is like i think it's probably I crazy you don't want him to establish a grip. You want to no. get that grip before it's established. But he's, he established it. And you I watched to shit. watch Rita rip off the grip and extend like as tall. There's a picture of me and him. And it kind of gives you context for just how tall and lanky he is. To have him fully extend like that and push both his legs out while extending and ripping the grip off was wild. And ADCC World Championships, first round, Cyborg returning former champion... Not of the year, but he's a former champion in ADCC. And to have a guy that's an invitee that has been hot and cold in 26 yeah. seconds take him out. That Again, I don't think in the weekend that arena got louder. Like that might have been one of the loudest moments of the arena of the weekend. It was it was wild. Go back and watch it. I don't have I don't have more than that. It was it was 26 seconds long. Um, I think it's on everyone's submission of the year list. And then yeah. Cyborg continued to win. And like win IBJJF Worlds and win a bunch of other stuff and show us that yep he's you know he's not down and out and he's not a shell of his former self he still can compete and beat the best guys in the world. On top of that, kind of shows just how wild that sub is. 
Um, interesting submission of the year. I think you have to put it here. Gordon versus Andre, the rear naked choke. Um, I don't think, I mean, I think. I, I think, think the, the context is what makes this yeah, a contender. That's what I was about to say. For the <laughs> amount of people that were interested in this match, yeah. that is what makes it submission of the year, not because it was. Yeah. I mean, I, I wrote an article on Grappling Rewind. We, when you used to do more article work on grapplingrewind.com, um, when we, we don't host articles much and we don't, we don't write them anymore. We focus on the podcast. But I wrote an article about why that matchup was still compelling in like 2019 or like 2018, like something about talking about the history of the matchup and why it was important. And then four years later, like we actually, we actually got the matchup, and this is a matchup that no one knew if we were ever actually going to get. And even like at ADCC, it was still like a is you know are they going to make it to the mat day two? Is Gordon going to get injured or this? Like, yeah. is this a match we're actually going to see? This is a changing of the guard moment in a big way that I think is really important in combat sports. Is like you have a former dominant champion being taken out by your newer up-and-coming champion and kind of passing along the torch. This is, I don't think the sub, for Gordon to submit Andre, it's really impressive. Like, don't get me wrong. Andre is a legend of the sport, doesn't get submitted a whole lot. I think the Drysdale sub in like 07 that may or may not have been fixed is the last time he got subbed or something. I could be, again, could be wrong about that. I'm speaking completely off the top of my head. Andre's not a guy that competes a lot, not a guy that gets submitted a lot. To have Gordon like control him, dominate, and then submit him in the super fight at ADCC is wild. Although I think technically, technically it was a really impressive performance. It wasn't once Gordon had his back, it wasn't really surprising. But the fact that the match happened, it was the biggest match of the year by far. And for it to end in sub, I think rightfully puts it on this list, even though it's not in itself as either impressive or exciting. The context for this one is what makes it exciting. I think it's on our list as well, just for the greater context and kind of what it meant for the sport overall in that changing of the guard. Finally, Gordon taking the absolute super fight title from Andre, Andre retiring, maybe, maybe not, but it was a, it was a wild moment to be there live for and to, you know, to watch that changing of the guard. Any other kind of thoughts you got on it? Nope. Can we, uh, can we add submission of the year on our list? Like USADA for completely ruining like the absolute final. I mean, we can, it's, it's, it's in, it's in the contention. Like you saw the shows because you were there, you were live like, for that. You were in the arena yeah, when that I was, was there, happening, and it was weird. <laughs> yeah, so we yeah, bring it up. Like, Usada fucking up the world the, championships at yeah, the last that team minute. Rolled out. They and were you said, gone. You said everyone rolled out. The whole team rolled out. That's funny. The whole team that we're speaking of was gone. Oh, that's so like, funny. None of them did finals. They were all gone. That's hilarious. <laughs> so anyway, you saw you saw this. You saw it against. So what year. do you want to go to next? We have so for us a couple other categories. They have female grappler of the year. They have breakthrough we'll performance. Go, we'll they have male grappler. It's the easiest. It's the easiest thing, or the order that I have established. Okay, let's we'll start with female team. female grappler of the year. They have Amy Campo listed. Amy Campo had a hell of a year. Wins yeah, West Coast had. trials. Gets black belt this year. Yeah. Um. She won West Coast trials as a brown belt i think i believe so because she got her black belt afterwards yeah because i I interviewed her i think she was still technically a brown belt she got it very shortly after then beats gabby garcia in the world championships dominantly then wins the ibjgf world's nogi and the absolute silver like she had a crazy year you can't there's very few people that are ever going to have a year like that in women's jiu-jitsu. And then she won, she won Worlds. She won Nogi Worlds. Yeah. Like, you just think like, that accolades alone, you're not you're not going to have a better year. To win Nogi Worlds and beat, again, beat Changing the Guard, beat Gabby Garcia in maybe what seems to be her last ADCC. She's retiring. You beat the former dominant champ that people talked about for years. Like, oh, she should be in a different weight class. She should have someone else. Like, yeah. All of that talk, Amy Campo comes in as a new black belt on, you know, on the with the new technical knowledge and where the sport's going and and beats Gabby Garcia, 
who is that long-standing four-time ADCC champion and shows everyone, no, you just got to come with a different strategy and fight her in a different way. And you have to do these things. People have kind of figured out over the last two years with Gabby Garcia, but you know, she was an impenetrable wall for, for years. And to have Campo beat her where she is best in ADCC, I think that definitely puts her in the, obviously on this list, but in the running for pretty strong contender for a grapple, female yeah. grapple of the year. Um, next I, one, I agree. we have Gabby Passana, IBGGF PANS champ, heavyweight and absolute euros open champ brazilian nationals champ and ajp grand slam champ you put you put the note there i'm reading miranda's notes because miranda takes great yeah. notes and i take dog I shit notes i think it's london i think that oh, london. was what it was yeah the ajp I know, runs a, as i was going through all their alco- uh, accolades that was what they had and yeah london like, grand slam may not know what the hell this means because yep. i don't so london grand slam is london. ajp does four world events um, that are or not for they do more sometimes, but the Grand Slam events for AJP are their majors, much like the IBJJF has Pans, Euros, Brazilieros, and Worlds. AJP has um, London, they have Brazil, they have Abu Dhabi, and they have Tokyo, I think, and then they have Worlds. They have those are their Grand Slam events. So winning a London Grand Slam, London Grand Slam event for AJP. UAEJGF formerly is a really really big deal um and also on top of all the IBJJF you know accolades she got Gabby had a really good year didn't see her in ADCC which I think for for our lists kind of you know maybe it doesn't put her where Campo is but definitely in contention I think very very good to have on this list uh next we have Fionn Davies ADCC under 60 kilograms champ IBJJF Gi world champion and silver at pants. Uh, she didn't do Nogi Worlds, did she? No, I didn't see her yeah. there. But again, you win ADCC Worlds uh, under 60, which is one of them. Both divisions for women were stacked this year. You know you're going to have your ADCC women's under 60 and over 60 champion on a list. On this list, any ADCC year, that's, that's sort of how it runs. Theon had a phenomenal year, looked good, pretty much on all her super fights as well. Had some super dominant performances. Uh, can't say enough about Theon. Very deserved to be on the list. Any other thoughts? No. I mean, she's had some dominant wins over... Uh, I'm trying to think. She she won... So she won against the other female grappler um, contender, Brianna St. Marie. She won against her yeah. to win the ADCC championship. Mm-hmm. Um. And she's won against Bia, which winning against Bia is well, not former the ADCC easy. champion too. Yeah, like yeah. that's it. It speaks to just how good Fionn is to beat multiple champions, and then next person on the list to beat Brian Saint Marie. Yeah, or Saint Marie, who is your who's number one, one thirty five pound champ. She won um, East Coast trials. East Coast trials. So not technically this year, although yeah, we I, always I, tend to muddle these together. Yeah, I added I added trials in because it's one calendar year of ADCC. What? Uh, yeah, which is two years. Which is one, two years. One ADCC but, season, which is two years. Yeah, which is two years. So I kind of added it in. Yeah. I think it's it works. I mean, it's also it, but it, it gives you a reason for why and where they where they're coming from. Like she didn't do West Coast trials because she already won East Coast trials. So oh no, so sorry she. Yeah, she got the invite right because east coast trials isn't a qualifier for women no she got an invite i believe so yeah yeah, sorry i i i I muddled that around in my head Um, no yeah east coast trials doesn't mean shit for females yep she got she won nogi worlds and she got silver at adcc phenomenal year for her and i think she really she really came into our radar with that win with that east coast trials win last year and then it's continued to show us especially in the one in the who's number one event like she is here to crack and she's very very good uh and then last but not least misa bastos um nogi pans champ ibjjf american nationals champ ibjjf euros champ um and then south american trials which is the second trials for brazil brazil Euros champ and ibjjf gi world champ although doesn't have the ADCC under 60 kilogram 
you know, title, she was significantly undersized for that and really like she should be part of that 55 kilogram ADCC yeah. class we talk about. So that's that's a this was, this is a weird one to talk about because be, given how right. undersized Misa is for the under 60 kilogram division ADCC, do you like hold that against her well, in this discussion? But I, but I think she that's why she has all the IBJJF accolades because yeah. they do have those smaller divisions. Right. It's just interesting is, in that in the framework she's here. She's a smaller person. It's yeah. like do you it's like we have to kind of if we're, if we're saying like grapplers of the year because she is so undersized for that division she was entering, do we like do we necessarily hold that against her when she was beaten by like the bigger women in that weight class if that was all that was available to her in that organization. So it's it's an interesting kind of discussion that we have to have internally with this, but my Sabasso, especially in the gi and when he in the trials champ very, very impressive. Super great yeah. year. All right. Let's move on to male grappler because that makes most sense coming off the heels of female grappler. Uh, this one's interesting. This one's fun. I'm going to list through all the names and we'll go through the, we'll go through the accolades. I think that's more interesting. We have Cade. We have Gordon Ryan. We have Cade Petrolo, Gordon Ryan, Mika Galvao, Diego Hayes, Baby Shark, Diego Hayes, Baby Shark, Nicholas Margali. Um, Cade, I think... It's funny. We actually, I, I was going to say it's, it's hard to, to bet against Cade or just talk against Cade, but he won ADCC and then he is now the champion of 1FC in the division that they're sort of building around him. And he is submitting his way through that division. Had a really fun match with Mateus Gaber recently in the organization. Winning ADCC and the trials in the previous year to get into ADCC uh, puts you in a tall list. That being said, also ADCC winners, we have Gordon Ryan, who wins both the absolute super fight versus Galvao. First time anyone's beaten Galvao in forever at ADCC. The, he's the who's number one heavyweight champ, and he is the plus 99 kilogram division champ of ADCC. Like, no one's done that. Gordon's looked so dominant, it's almost... You almost don't want to consider him for this award because of how dominant he's looked. And it's weird to say that. No, but I, I get what you're saying. Because he does, he, up to his last match with uh, Nicky Rod, he really didn't look beatable. Yeah. Um, he didn't really make mistakes. He didn't really have anything that people were able to take advantage of. You know, coming back from sickness, he did look a little gassed at times, but it yeah. still didn't change anything. Um, it's, it's wild to it consider, it though, where it's like we're yeah. almost discounting him because it's like, oh, I mean, he beat everyone. We kind of ex- it's like it's weird. We were all, I'm almost not impressed with his performances because he has been so dominant, continued to be so dominant and shown. It's like, yeah, it's like it's almost implied that he's the best guy around. And so it's weird to consider him for male grapple of the year because like. It seems like everyone else should be fighting for that title because he's yeah. just sort of the guy. It's it's a weird it's 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 such a weird framework to try to like think about Gordon in contention for this because we know he he's beaten everyone and there's yeah. not a guy you could put on this list like he probably wouldn't beat and so it's weird to consider Gordon like yeah male grapple of the year eh, kind of makes sense just by the numbers alone and by like no one can probably even come close to beating him. Nicky Rod broke his foot still didn't beat him it's uh it's wild yeah. Gordon Ryan's really fucking good it's weird to have him in this conversation because uh he's so fucking good pretty much I have nothing else make a yeah. out um ADCC champ no sorry he loses to Kate oh yeah he does yeah that's my bad it's all good thank god I we got teamwork here yeah. ADCC silver medalist uh murdered everyone along the way uh looked great doing it uh, IBGF world champ, Brazilian national champ, South American trials winner. And if you didn't watch his first South American trials, that puts him on this list alone. Just watching him murk through everyone at his trials and show yep. that he is on an absolute another level. He had all the wins at Polaris this year. Um, like, dudes looked unstoppable. He's looked on fire and then Cade takes him out. But... You look at what he's done overall. Like he has competed. I think, I think we I tabulated his record up this year, and I listed like 
all of his wins that I thought were like, oh, that's a really good win. And he has like 22 wins against guys that are like really good and on the level this year alone. He has been phenomenally active and beaten everyone. The only the only thing I can think of is it it wasn't BJJ stars, but it was something. BJ was, bet where he beat Hulk. It was. Yeah. But in that, that was the also the tournament where he lost. But he lost on some like point technicality, I think. Maybe I don't like. He I left, don't recall. It wasn't. It wasn't like him losing bad. It was like him losing because of I think a penalty or like mm-hmm. it was a advantage. Or but he hasn't had any like really dominant, not dominant losses, but he hasn't yeah. had any horrible losses at all. Yep. I mean, his performances are always one point whenever he does anything. Yeah. Um. So then yeah, he. We have Diogo Hayes, Baby Shark Hayes, ADCC champ, in one of the most endearing interviews ever after winning. He gets his dad up and he's like, "This is my dad," and he like thanks him, and it's just it's adorable to watch that. That human monster destroy people while still being one of the smallest guys in the weight. This sorry, the smallest guy in under six kilograms at ADCC. Like that for me is wild to consider that like the smallest guy in the weight class won the weight class. And he had a pathway to do it, but ADCC champ, Brazilian national champ, South American trials winner. He wins in the first trials, like had a breakout year and a phenomenal year. As one of the sm- as the smallest guy in this list, like every other guy in this list, I think the next smallest guy is Mika. Mika's it is yeah. Mika's cutting to make seventy kilograms, seventy seven kilograms. Yeah, and he's not cutting yeah. small. He, he competed against Hulk and looked like not significantly outsized versus Hulk. Yeah, Cade's another guy cutting weight to make seventy seven kilograms. Then you got Mergali, I, you got Gordon. Yeah, I think Baby Shark's like eaten. To make weight. Yeah. And that's like what I'm saying. Like, to be on this eating list food to make and to perform as well as he did, even being at that size, is phenomenal. I think very deserving to be on this list. I think this list mirrors our list pretty closely for male grapplers of the year. This is this is the list. And then on top of that, you got Mergali, Brazilian Nationals winner, ADCC silver medalist, um, ADCC absolute bronze medalist, Brazilian Arrows champ, IBJGF world silver. IBJJF World's absolute champ. And uh, what has he had? Seven Nogi matches? Yeah, something like that. Like, for me, that think, puts him on the yeah, list anyway. I think he belongs on the list. And I think he ranks high on the list because of the fact that he came over from Gi to Nogi and just, like, immediately did well. I mean, yeah. and, and didn't just do well, but, like... He won he big people. shit. That's what I mean. He, he, he took people out that no one really expected him to be able to. Mm-hmm. Um, he dealt with Craig Jones, like yeah, like well, and didn't again didn't win, but like dealt with him in a way that I did not expect. I thought he could do, but to see him actually go into practice and do that, so for me, he's on this list because he again he performed very well. Like everyone on this list has big accolades, but to. To actually put your money where your mouth is, go from no from gi to no gi, and then win medals. No one in the no one since I have been we've been covering the sport has done that. It's something that used to happen back when like ADCC was um it was newer, but it's not something we have seen anyone do in the modern era. And no, that and, alone is what makes it so impressive. And a lot of people talk shit about them adding him into ADCC. When he yeah. is, was initially added in, people were talking shit I mean, left and right about he it. He got added in 2019. People were talking shit then because he wasn't training in the gi, in, in no gi. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, I can't wait. And, and Mo was like, look, guys, say whatever you want. We know Mergali is good. If he wants to do it, put him in. You know he's one of the best in the world of grappling. Let's see if he can do it. And then he moved to the New Wave camp with Gordon and John and that room and showed us like, oh, yeah, if you take one of the if you take arguably, depending on who you're asking, the best guy in the gi in the world. And then you take off the gi, you give him six months with some of the best guys in the world, Gordon. Yeah. And John. Yeah, he can he can go win world titles and world medals in no gi. And he he put his money where his mouth is and, and went and showed up, made the weight and did it. 
this is going to be a tough list for us to curate here, I think. And I think this list really is pretty much our list, too, which I think is funny. Um, regardless of all the other organizations we cover, like, very impressive. So that's what we got for Male Grapplers of the Year. Um, you want to talk about breakthrough performances? Sure. We got Brianne St. Marie. We have Giancarlo Bodoni, Amy Campo, Isaac Michelle, and Jay Rodriguez. I think all these guys, all these people are on the list for different reasons. Um, Amy Campo, again, we've already kind of talked about her. Brianne St. Marie, we've already kind of talked about her, like coming onto the scene, winning their trials, putting up dominant performances as newer black belts or people that we had not covered on major stage organizations or events as much before. Super impressive. Let's talk about the three we haven't talked about as much. Giancarlo. Like, Giancarlo yeah. moves to New Wave and becomes kind of Gordon's kind of Gordon's first project. Sort of in New Wave, right? Is that probably correct? Yeah. And they kind of went, look, he can go do it. it. Um, I had to corner against Gordon at East Coast Trials. Uh, a guy we were cornering versus Bodoni. That was fun. And I got to see kind of firsthand to try to corner against Bodoni and like watch Gordon and him work together was just wild. And he's a guy that everyone knew was good, but since moving to New Wave and then going from this guy that everyone kind of knew was good, really good in the gi, to then dominantly winning East Coast trials last year and then going all the way at ADCC. Like he was one of my dark horse guys. I was like, yeah, he can do it in the division, but he's got a lot of tough guys to get through. I'm not sure, you know, if he'll put it all together. And then Put it all together, dominantly wins ADCC. Uh, it's it's hard to not say he broke out last year, but I think we still had a lot of questions about how good he was in Nogi yeah. that he answered this year, and he kind of put a stamp on any of the doubt because he had a couple, you know, losses at Emerald City and some other organizations, and then putting it all together at ADCC kind of put a stamp on how good he is. It is a little weird to call it a breakout performance when you do win trials last year, though. True. In one of the biggest divisions that they had. Yeah. I think I think he I, won in the biggest division at the time. No. That was 77. The biggest division was still 77. He wasn't a 77. He was 88. Yeah. So. so. Any, any kind of thoughts on Giancarlo? No, I think, I think he did kind of begin his breakthrough with trials. Um, but I think also him winning ADCC championships this year was kind of, no one really expected that to happen. Yeah. Um, so I think that is like, when we, when we think of like, what is the breakthrough that everyone probably is talking about or mentioning, it's probably that. Yeah. Um, Cause I don't think a lot of people expected him to win that um, and do as well as he has. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, he definitely belongs on the list with, with everyone else. So the two other guys are Isaac Michelle and Jay Rodriguez. I think these guys, I think, for me, I think this is Amy Campo. Um, but I, the two guys, Isaac Michelle and Jay Rodriguez, these two are, for me, we always kind of talk about our criteria for breakout performance of the year. And I think ours every year is pretty significantly different than, than Flo's, um, which is fine because we're, you know, different organizations making different lists. J-Rod's winning West Coast Trials and, like, all the super fights that he got on and all the... That dude got booked on a lot of stuff, and we got to know his game, know who he was. We got to see who he was, B-team. He's now on B-team. We got to see, like, the flavor, and, like, we got to learn this year who Jay Rodriguez was in a way where we knew— He went from being Nicky Rod's little brother that was good that knew some wrestling to being his own guy in his own entity, entity— and showing us all that this year. Like, he's a guy that was kind of on our radar last year that is in main event slots, in co-main event slots now, hugely on our radar. And Isaac Michelle, I think, fits a lot of that same criteria. You know, he was a guy, he was Craig Jones's guy that was like, oh, he's Craig Jones Suzuki, you know, guys yeah. know who he is, he's really good, but he hadn't had that performance, goes, stomps the trials, wins at a division up, Craig then train, changes spots with him, takes his under 99 kilogram win, gives him the 88 kilogram at ADCC. He wasn't able to you know, do that. He also wins who's number one, um, or sorry, the who's after, next series. Yeah, and, the who's next after the freaking longest match 
after one of the worst matches of all time. Um, <laughs> in like, but like that, but regardless of how you, how I feel about the match, very vocally that about how it was done, how it was put together, how it was broadcast. Guys know who he is now because of that Chambers match, and guys know that like you may not, you know, may not have appreciated the strategy of the game for that. But you know who Isaac Michelle is, and then him going and winning ADCC trials kind of shows you, oh yeah, he really is on the level, and he's you know, he he is that guy you need to watch out for. Um, but again, in the same kind of place as Jay Rodriguez, guys, guys we were aware of, we knew of, they were from good camps, from good like, from good rooms, going and winning trials on their own volition, on their own like accord, and then going to the world championships, like putting them on the map as like, yep, these are the guys that we're going to see for years to come and that are going to com- continue to compete on that level and make improvements in that camp. So very funny that we have two B team guys on this list. Oh, we do. I didn't even think about that. Yep. So any other kind of closing thoughts for you, Miranda, for any breakup performances? No, no, not from the list. Okay. Next so one we got. We'll go down to, we'll go to match of the year. Match of the year. Um, I I gotta I can't wait for our matches of the year because we always do a bunch of them on our list. Um, Flo pared it down, uh, and I think these are ones I think we'll go into more depth on on a following show. Cade Vertolo versus PJ Barch ADCC, Gordon Ryan versus Cleve Pena, who's number one. Theon Davies versus Bia Mosquita ADCC World Championships. Damian Anderson versus Andrew Tackett ADCC uh, West Coast Trials. No, it was East. This is the or at table least one. The one- what? This is the table one. With it. So the one so the one that's on so this is Flo's list. The one that's on our list is the West Coast Trials match. Okay. This is this is the one that I don't know. It, I went off their list and their list at least their list said that it was East Coast. So East Coast was last I, year. Yeah, let me check. Let me check. Keep on going yeah. and I'll check on this. So this so this is so this is on our list. Um, and I think Damian Anderson, even in the match of the year stuff, like put an Instagram post basically going, you should vote for this match for match of the year. And then I watched, we watched the match and went, that was a banger match. Yeah, Damien, you got me. Um, so Damien versus Tack at West Coast Trials. Wagner Hosher versus Isaac Michelle, ADCC World Championships. This one I think is gonna, um, a lot of people I think are very back and forth on this match. And I'm, I'm very happy it made their list because it's going to make people watch it again. And I think it's going to reinvigorate that debate. And I, I love that. Uh, and last we have Nikos Margali versus Ty Rotolo. Uh, this is on our list as well. But it's one that I'm going to have to justify to the entire Grappling Rewind team. Because if you watch it, like... This okay, match- I was wrong. It is West Coast. But the thing is, they show video. I'm trying to look. The I video that they I have with the hitting the table. Maybe is West I watched Coast. the video and I just thought it was from Atlantic City and I just assumed. But anyway. Morgali versus Ty, I think, is one of those matches that the match maybe not the best, but the context of the match is what made it really, really important. Kind of like with Gordon and Penna. Like the context of the match is what makes it important. You know, Ty versus Margali was Ty coming in, getting beaten in his division, coming into absolute, undersized, beating Penna, then going gassed and dog tired against Mergali and like continuing to push forward and push forward and push forward. And like you just got to see that world championship gear from Ty as the smaller man. And it was really interesting. Um, I'm gonna have to rewatch this. I, I think this is this is on the match of the year, not for like how exciting it was. Sorry, for how exciting it was, not because of anything like technical, but because it was just Ty throwing everything he had at yeah. that moment into Nicholas Magali and refusing to quit. And it was a really yeah. interesting match for that respect. Um, I think they're more interesting technical matches, but like like Cade and PJ Barch, like that match yeah, was but, a banger. But uh, it was a fun match to watch. Oh, yeah. Especially when you know, like, Ty being smaller, him going against who he went against prior, mm-hmm. and then having this match and just kind of throwing the kitchen sink yeah. at and Bergali's his brother effort. and his brother winning ADCC right before this, like his brother yeah. won and then he gets into absolute, having not meddled in his division and then goes on this run in absolute and runs into Mergali. So like that again, the ADCC 
we talk about stories and like that is one of the stories that why this match is on the list is for the story of behind the match, much like Gordon and Penna, a match that we we last saw ADCC 2017, right? Yeah. And then we saw Penna in the super fight, and then it was like Gordon wanted the match back. Gordon wanted the match back. Penna was like, yeah, I'll give you the match back. And it was this back and forth, like, are we ever going to see this match happen again? We finally got it at who's number one, like, the day after Leandro Lowe's death, and it had all the the history behind it and how the match went and Penna wanting to quit and then kind of quitting in the match and then no one really knowing what was going on, all the drama that ensued. Um, it, it was an interesting match for a lot of reasons, but it was, again, another one of those legacy matches that we we wanted to see for years and years and years that we finally got to see this year and it gave us so many more questions and it left so many things kind of unanswered but in an interesting way and then we didn't see the matchup at ADCC and everyone kind of kind of laughed about that um so yeah and then Cade versus PJ is just uh one of the all-time bangers of ADCC yeah it was like just like, it was the a- Two of them just going at it. This was a fucking well, close match, too. I, I have to say, PJ Barch, like, all year has had some crazy-ass matches. Yeah. Because, like, his his East Coast Trials matches I mean, were all he beats crazy. fucking JT Torres in yeah. ADCC. Like, you beat the two-time champion at ADCC. Like, are you not entertained? Yeah, and then he runs into he runs into fucking Cade the next match, and you're like, oh man, you got a you got a rough run on it. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's 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 what Flow Grappling has out. I think it's a great list. They they always every year, um, I think put out a great list. They put they have a bunch of resources they put behind it, and I always love going back and remembering and seeing like the best stuff that's come out of Flow for the year that they want to kind of push and talk about, and I love seeing that some of these guys and some of these women get the push again after remembering, oh yeah, they did have a really good match. A lot of times we'll see these people booked immediately after and that helps them make money and I just like seeing, you know, the athletes make money and showcased. So uh, that's all I got, Marina. Any kind of closing thoughts on any of these? I talked a lot. um, No. Because I've been fuzzy and sick. That's okay. Last week I don't think you talked a lot so I think this time around, you know, you can make up for I'm not make, talking a lot. Making up for not talking time. about. So that's Flo's list and Miranda's uh, phenomenal notes as usual and helping me keep the, keep the wheels on the show. Um, let's talk about Fury unless we got any closing thoughts. So we have oh, so we have other stuff this year. We have uh, what what categories do we have? Let me pull it out. We had oh I wrote this down because I I have it listed out. You we really had match be... of the year, breakout of the year, and yep. sub of the year. Up- I also have we also have upset of the year. Upset okay, of the okay. year for me is always a really really fun one. Um, they, they don't include here in flow, but we always I always love upset of the year because upset of the year is like who wasn't supposed to win, but fucking won anyway. And I just love the sport because MMA and Jiu Jitsu always have those moments where it's like that guy wasn't supposed to win, but he fucking did, and. Uh, it's wild. I might put Nikki versus Gordon on that list, even though Gordon didn't win. I think every year, or usually every year, we put a match that someone doesn't win, but they weren't supposed to do well and they look really good for upset of the yeah. year. I think every year we usually do it. I think that will be my match this year, which is like Nikki no, versus Gordon. Is, wasn't supposed to win. One- wasn't supposed to look good, but he did. Yeah, so 100% was that way. Um, if you guys have any suggestions for match of the year, upset of the year, breakout of the year, um, submission of the year, or uh, let's see. Oh, I have breakout of the year listed twice here. That's my bad. Um, shoot us a DM. Shoot us who you think you should should be on that list. And uh, we may include it on the list. And we appreciate it. So let's move into the fight card for Fury Grappling 6. Um, it is happening on December 30th. I think it's Friday. Yeah, Friday. Yeah, uh, it it's on Friday. Fight Pass. Usually produced really well. Mostly an MMA heavy card this 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 week for them. Uh, usually they mix grapplers and MMA. This one is primarily just UFC fighters and MMA fighters squaring off. Uh, the card we have now. Headlined by Rose Namajunas versus Jillian Robertson. This should be fun. Um, both are very, very good grapplers. 
I, I can see with both of them being on Fury before and both of them in the UFC, I could see this going either way. Um, and neither is really going to surprise me. We know Rose like, has a great Jill- sub game. We know Jillian has a great sub game. Jillian also has a size advantage. Yeah. I, I think see, we have. We, we have talked this, about we this internally. Because it's at 35. What? We talked about this internally. It's at 135. Yeah. Uh, Rose is not 135. I don't think Jillian is 135 either. Is she a 25 or now? Uh, yeah, or is but she you, a have to, you have to think about it. I would add 10 pounds onto whatever they fight at. Oh, at least. I mean, at least 10 to, 10 to 20, depending on because the holidays. Because Jillian, the last match Jillian had on Fury was against um, a local girl that we both know. And she yeah. is like a 135, 145. Right. So my assumption is that match was at either 35 or 45. So I'm thinking Jillian is probably a little bit larger than Rose. Yeah, she, I mean, she fights at 25. Yeah, Rose isn't 125. Like, yeah, she might be about 125, and when, but she she, she walks walk lower. Yeah. So yeah, Jillian has a size advantage. I'm not sure how much that will play into it. Um, but again, this is for we don't. These are women we don't cover a ton typically on the show, so I'm not hugely in depth with their jujitsu games. I more so kind of follow them in MMA and know how they do MMA. Jillian does have significantly more recent grappling matches than Rose does. I don't. I don't remember Rose. Rose was on a Fury card and was removed from it, but mm-hmm. I don't remember her doing a pro grappling match. I think we, I'm, that. I'm blanking on what we've seen her on, and I'm, it's. Um, I'm just. I'm trying to rack my brain for what we saw her on. I thought we did see her on. Um, it wasn't Fury because she she was a last minute. They oh, you're right. Yeah, she got, she got taken off that card and she didn't do it. I kind of lean Jillian here. I mean, Rose is really impressive, but Jillian just has a bunch more grappling matches and pro grappling matches. So I kind of want to lean her just on that experience alone. Although Rose has some phenomenal submissions in the UFC, especially, yeah. especially her arm bar wins have always really yeah. impressed me um, as the smaller, faster person here wouldn't surprise me, but Jillian just has more experience in the format, so and there's no leg locks, so I kind of lean, I kind of lean her there. Um, Clay Guida versus Chase Hooper. This is the match of will Clay Guida in the singlet beat BJJ uh, young man Chase Hooper? <laughs> that's that's the question. Can can Clay the Guida? Thing, the, the thing about Clay Guida is you have to control him. Yeah, he's and stupid he's strong. Not, yeah. But Clay Guida, I mean, he moves in ways that I don't even understand. Like, he... Watching him grapple is, is interesting. It is really interesting. It's like, he doesn't give you a lot of openings. He's beatable in grappling, like, but it's... He's going to frustrate you. And I think Chase Hooper is the guy that's going to kind of throw caution to the wind. And maybe be able to catch Clay... Although watching Clay just like stall, not stalling on top, but just like controlling Chase on the bottom also wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. Yeah. Like this is going to be a match of Clay Guida coming out in a singlet, trying to get on top of Chase Hooper and hold him down and hold him around and try to go to north south and get the back. And Chase Hooper trying to do jujitsu triangles from the bottom. And, and, and it could be a draw or it could be like a slow match. Or it could be Clay imposing, or it could be Chase trying. Like that's, I think that's they don't do, where this match goes. They don't goes. do draws in Fury, right? Right. I, okay. Uh, they don't. They use MMA scoring. They use they MMA do... scoring for jujitsu. Yeah. So it's like, so if you control a guy, so Clay basically does the wrestle fuck thing and controls yeah. you on top for ten minutes or however long the matches are, he will win in the rule set. Yeah. Because that's yeah. what they use. So they're not going to see even if Chase is throwing up stuff from the bottom. Typically, if Clay is controlling the, sorry, if Chase is throwing up from the bottom, and Clay is controlling on top and like controlling the positional exchanges, Chase will yeah. have to lock up really, really tight subs in yeah. order to win that. Based on kind of like traditional MMA scoring, um, yeah. again, could go either way. Uh, we also have Joseph Piler versus Eric Your Boy Anders, um, a nickname I absolutely love to say. Uh, I looked it up. We, you, you actually, you had me look it up. Uh, it is Y A. Yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to double check that that Maine was in fact my friend that loves the name your boy. I love your boy. I love. I love that he has it because he likes hearing Bruce Buffer say it. 
It's Eric Y A B O I, ya boy. Eric, ya boy Anders. And I just love that, like, every time Boosh Pepper comes out, Eric, ya boy Anders. It's just every time I'm like, yes. I love hearing it in a professional context. Um, so that should be fun. We have Andre Petroski versus uh, Ovin St. Peru, who, if OSP can get another Von Pru choke, Von Flu choke, um, I would love it. I would love to see him do it. I have no other. I have no other wants. It. He might be able to do it. He uh, has, Andre is not the easiest to control. No, it's it's a tough ask, and yeah. he's local. So Andre's going to be local. The card cards a PA card. He's you know, Andre's out of PA. Yeah. OSP is not. Um, but I went back and watched uh, a couple of OSP's wins by Von Fluchoke versus Yushin Okami and versus. Uh, I think two other wins. He has a really neat way he sets that up. And it's... Because he sets it up from top position. Yeah. He has a setup for it that is very, very impressive. That it's not just he's happenstance. Like most times in ju- in jujitsu, people kind of happen to get to the Von Flu choke. OSP has a setup for it. And he has a way to get you into it that is very, very unique. I hope... He hits it, so we get a chance to talk about it. But again, Pachowski is... Um, dude's a tough nut to crack. We also have Pat Shibata versus Alex Caceres. Caceres is a super fun grappler. Been watching him grapple since he was on da- uh, on Dada's fights back in Miami-Dade. I remember he triangled the guy back then, and he's always leaned, his, leaned into his jiu-jitsu um, and shown really, really good jiu-jitsu. Could go either way. I think I'm going to lean Caceres here because we've seen him on the cards before. He really knows how to grapple. Um, anything else? No, he's he. I think he's going to win, and he he normally is a very exciting uh, kind of grappler to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, and he'll be all over the place. He'll he'll be he'll definitely um, create a very exciting match to watch. We also have Trevor Giles versus Mike Marlett and Philip Rowe versus Nick. Uh, Galani. I think it's interesting that we're going to have Philip Rowe on this card because last time, we've covered Philip a couple of times. Most notably, he did the exhibition match versus Gordon Ryan. Yeah. Uh, and Philip Rowe just With recently... broken hands? Didn't he have a broken hand? Uh, Gordon had a broken hand, I think. No. N- Philip did. Because uh, he came, it, his hand was all wrapped up and before the match, he took it off, and then he fought him with, like, a broken hand. Huh. I think I mean, that was the story. Philip Rowe just recently had a fight in the UFC. I forget. I don't think it went his yeah. way. But, again, good grappler. It'll be interesting to see him. Again, in jiu-jitsu, I like that he is kind of coming back into jiu-jitsu, and we're seeing him do more stuff in jiu-jitsu. Uh, he fought... Yeah, he's been on um, Fury. He was on Fury Pro Grappling 3. And before that was Gordon Ryan in late 21 was the custom rules bout for that on who's number one. Um, he's also went against Cody Steele, Gabriel Checo. So no stranger to it. Be curious to see and kind of watch him show off his grappling. So yeah. that's all I got for, ta- uh, for, uh, for Fury. I think uh, you told me actually Pat Barry's on the card as well. Yeah, that's what I, I saw somewhere where it said Pat Barry was on the card. But then I don't see where they give you the undercard. Or it's Fury, so they do the they do the um the undercard after the main card. Yeah, they do the dark show cards basically. Yeah, and I don't I don't see a card for that at all. Okay. So I don't know. So. And that I don't would be Fury. I don't know of any. Normally we have a bunch of uh, people that we know personally that are on these cards, yeah. and this one does not have a bunch of locals. Yeah, even on the Instagram, there's only like two different photos for this card. Um, so I'm not again I, the. I'm not really sure what's around it. It's more MMA fighters and UFC fighters than is normal for Fury. Yeah. But they may be changing their format. Not sure. But regardless, they're fun. They're produced very well. Usually Big J's on commentary and does a great job. So it's very, very pleasant to listen to. Looking forward to it. Um, I think that's it for this week on the show. You got anything else going on this week? Yeah, I think that's it. No, I think that's it. We have uh, have Ryzen. Ryzen. Yeah, Ryzen versus Bellator. I think we're, we're I think we're talking about getting together for Grappling Grind and like just watching that. But it end it's like the main the card starts at midnight our time, and then the main card starts at like three a.m. And we've talked about it for years, and I've watched a couple of them. You watch it every year. 
Yeah, I try to. I I normally don't watch it on time. Like I watch it yeah. afterwards. I, that's what I do usually. I mean, or or I'll start watching it like five a.m. and then I'll watch the end and then I'll go yeah, back. Yeah, I've done and that before it. too. It's always good. Well, it, it's it, always fun. It, yeah, it's always fun, and you get like the the crazy uh, like ramen noodle guy, and mm-hmm. you Cup get noodle. all these like. Yeah. yeah, dude, I would love to go to it. One I do day. too. So it's One it's day, on a what... it's a bucket list to go to a yeah. Ryzen previously Pride uh, New Year's Eve show. Uh, it's a bucket yeah, list item. It was dynamite, wasn't it? Wasn't it? One was, and then it or not, uh, it was, a bunch it of events something... do it, but the way the way that yeah. Ryzen and Pride did it were always like wild. Those New Year's Eve shows were always yeah. wild, and I just want to go be part of it and see it live once because it's it's one of those bucket list items that i'm like that would be yeah. that would be and the show cheap. to go to yeah it's not expensive it's no. cheap and if I'm, if I'm going to japan to go see it like i don't care how much it is like yeah, yeah i'll drop three four hundred bucks on tickets if i'm going i'm already in japan yeah, it's not even i don't even think it's that much i think it's less than that no i think they're like i think it's relatively I think cheap. Like 50 bucks or something they're not expensive tickets. yeah it's it's not expensive i speak no japanese but i would have a great time watching fights and watching all of that go on so. Yeah, but you also have to control yourself because in in uh, mostly like Japanese and like Asian cards like that, they don't like get excited and scream. They do for certain things. Really quiet for certain. I'll be, yeah, but I'll it's be quiet. Super quiet. But it's like ADCC. Remember how quiet ADCC yeah, was? Yeah. It was like we were all just watching grappling, and then someone would sweep and we'd go, "Oh!" And it would, you know, <laughs> like it's an educated crowd watching the fights, yeah. and like I I just want to go and see it one time. I think it would be awesome. So oh, we're all talking too. about getting together. Um, and watching that because we hate our sleep schedules and I think half the team watches it anyway. I think yeah, me, you, watch. Josh, Simon, all independently usually end up watching the card, uh, at different times or varying times. Yeah. So enough of us watch it, it might actually be reasonable to like, instead of all of us individually purchasing the pay-per-view. Yeah, it's only $15, yeah. so it's not even like it's expensive. It's just, I it's Ryzen out, versus Bellator. I'm- yeah, I think I'm going out for New Year's Eve, and that's where it becomes problematic. Is because if you do get me, I'm going to be on like no sleep, and you know probably under the influence of whatever tipsy. I decided to do earlier that night. So, so New Year's Eve time, you'll get inter- You'll get an interesting Miranda. So we're all talking about doing that. I think that's all. I think it's all we got going. I just want to feel better. Um, I that's really my goal this week is just like feel like a person again and get over being so sick. Um, and then hopefully, you know, by the end of the week, be able to teach my class at the gym. And that's all I got going on. Enjoying the, enjoying the, the run up to the new year, enjoy some fury, enjoy some fights and, uh, get ready to do our end of the year show and the grappling rewind awards should be a lot of fun. You got anything else? Yeah. No, that's about it. All right. As always in the show, I'm your host, Maine, to my co-host, Miranda, and we are the grappling rewind to see on the mat. Remember what it is. Stay safe. If you like the show, please consider sharing it on Facebook with the folks at your gym. It's the best way that we grow the show and we really appreciate it. You can reach out to us on email. We also have Instagram. We have Facebook. We have Twitter. We have Google+. Plus. Until that shuts down. We have a website. If you have an event you would like to have us cover, please let us know. If you have a name, like most people do, and you'd like to have us stop butchering it, let us know. Reach out to us. The show is also available on YouTube, Spotify, in addition to iTunes and every other podcast service. We very much appreciate your time and thank you.